drones. They were illegal, they got legalized, they became illegal again and now they are legal. Yes, I'm not talking about weed, I'm talking about drones. And this time round, I hope they'll remain to be illegal. This video will inform you on all that you need to know before buying and flying a drone in Kenya. And we will also look at a few shortfalls of the current laws and regulations that have just been recently passed. Uh, let's start with the classifications. Drones are classified into three categories. First one is uh, low risk, then the second one is uh, medium risk, and the third one is high risk. And this classification is based on their risk to their public and property. So the low risk drones are those that don't uh, weigh more than 25 kgs. And this is the category in which I think most of us enthusiasts and also commercial uh, drone operators will fall into. But first, let's start with the most popular questions that I'm sure most of you want to know. And one, is there an age limit? Yes, the age limit is 18 years. You have to be above the age of 18 years to buy and use a drone in Kenya. Number two, who can register the drone? A Kenyan citizen can register a drone or a Kenyan resident. A company registered also in Kenya can register and the national and county governments. The law doesn't mention ownership of drones by a foreigner. So I'm assuming a foreigner will have to contract either a person who has a license locally or they'll have to get a company who can do the job on their behalf. So after registering the drone, you will be issued with a certificate. And if you need to do any modifications on that drone, it has to be approved by the KCAA. KCAA in full means Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. So I'll just be referring to them as KCAA. It's also important to know that a person cannot register any drone that has some kind of military specifications, something like uh, target locking or maybe something that can shoot a rocket, and that is for obvious uh, security reasons. Three, can I import or export a drone? Yes, you can import a drone into Kenya, but first you must inform the authorities. So you inform them before you buy it, otherwise it might be confiscated. And again, in this case, you contact KCAA. Also, when you want to export a drone, you have to notify KCAA. What they're doing is uh, they will be registering the drones the way they usually register vehicles. Like each vehicle has a logbook and it has a registration number. I'm assuming this is also what they'll be doing with the drones. So they'll maybe have some kind of registration number for each and every drone in Kenya. Five, can you go out and fly your drone? Well, yes, but only if you have a permit and to do so the permit is valid for up to 30 days so if you're a person who flies a drone for commercial activities or any kind of paid work for example an event you must first get a certificate from kcaa and this certificate must be applied 90 days before the day of the event and that certificate is called roc or in full it's called remote aircraft operation certificate when you apply for the certificate, there are a few things they'll test you, like how you handle the drone and general knowledge about operating the drones. When you get the certificate, that is the ROC certificate, it will be valid for up to 12 months, after which you'll have to renew it again after 12 months, that is. Six, what conditions can I fly the drone? Uh, the first one, you cannot fly the drone at night unless you have permission from KCAA, so don't risk it. Second thing is the weather has to be clear because uh, it's important to at least be able to maintain a clear line of sight with the drone. And also lastly, you should not fly the drone above 400 feet. That is also very important to note. So 400 feet is the limit and also not within 50 meters of any person, vehicle or structure that you are not in charge of. This means you can't fly a drone in a public beach unless it's empty and there is no one around or any other public place that has people within 50 meters. In this case, if you're, let's say, operating an event, it means you have control of that environment, therefore you can easily fly the drone. But if that's not the case, then it will be illegal for you to fly the drone where people are close by. What happens in case of an accident, number seven? Well, again, report immediately to KCAA. Also, the public will have a platform to report any violations made by drone operators. 
So that is something you should be on the lookout for. Eight, what if you already have a drone? In that case, you have six months to register it with KCA for you to have the compliance. Other things you need to note are you need some kind of third party insurance when flying the drone, especially in a commercial setup. You cannot sell or give your drone to someone else without informing KCA of the transfer. Another thing is you need to keep records of your flight paths, your safety regulations, and also documentation showing proof of ownership, among other things. This is because they might be doing some random background checks on these drones. Failing to comply with these laws can land in jail up to three years, or you can end up paying a fine up to two million shillings, or worst case scenario, both jail time and paying the fine. Unfortunately, I've not been able to find the updated pricings that is the cost of purchasing the licenses or all those other regulations. So I will be able to update those down in the description when I manage to get that information. Now that we have gone through the important parts of owning a drone in Kenya, I think there are a few major problems with the law as it is currently. Uh, the law shows how we Kenyans kind of depend a lot again on imports and not much on the innovations that we can do locally. For example, in the US, and I think also in Canada, there's a limit that any drone below 400 grams is considered a toy. And in that case, it means if you, let's say, purchase or import a drone, let's say, from China that costs only 5,000 shillings, you don't have to register that drone with KCA in our case. And I think this is a limitation on our end because uh, it's going to limit us on how we can be able to, you know, buy small drones and experiment with them because it's a gray area i'm not sure like personally i'm not sure if i buy a drone worth 3000 shillings should i register it and maybe it can fly up to even if it's 100 feet up so that's a gray area i'll try to get more clarifications on it but i would wish they would have explicitly told us maybe there's a leeway or there's a limit up to a certain weight of drones which can be allowed to be used without registering the other shortcoming of the current law is that every time you need to do an upgrade to a drone, you have to notify KCA. Again, this means you cannot participate in something like uh, FPV racing. FPV is a uh, first person view, like something like that. And these drones that are used for FPV racing are very small, tiny drones, which uh, travel very fast at very high speeds. That means they keep crashing a lot. And when they crash, you have to buy spare parts. Now, in this case, will you have to contact KCA every time you've crashed the drone and you want to do spare parts? Maybe you just have a simple 3D printer. You want to quickly print a spare part, replace it, your backup running. Now, again, at this point, not so sure. Will you have to be contacting KCA every time? Also, let's assume it's a school that uh, deals with modifications of drones or maybe they have an innovation of some kind of drones. This means will they also have to be contacting KCAH and every time? Because you know the problem with uh, having to contact KCA is the back and forth can become maybe an issue on how efficient you are or how efficient you're building your project. So hopefully that is also something we can be able to get clarifications on. And if I get to hear of any changes, again, I'll be able to update you guys. On the positive side, at least we can say progress has been made for people to get creative with drones and we can only hope KCA will give us the space to experiment and innovate with drones and also support us when we want to use the drones. As for us, drone operators and enthusiasts, always remember to be cautious and alert of the environment and fly a drone in clear line of sight even if it has those obstacle avoidance systems because endangering the public and negligence is actually what made drones get banned in the first place so we have a duty to make sure we are doing the correct thing and that has been it for this quick update video feel free to write any questions or comment in the comment section and i'll be able to answer any questions you have so until the next video see you